Good. Hey, this is Jason Cruz with MMA Payout out here in Seattle, Washington. We are here once again with the interview. And this time we have a special guest, Shane Burgos, uh, PFL, uh, featherweight, lightweight. We'll talk about that. Uh, first and foremost, the biggest question I have for you today, Mets or Yankees? Uh, I'm from New York. I know I'm supposed to have one, but uh, I don't watch any sports besides fighting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, awesome. Okay. But I, I will say I like the, the Yankees logo and colors better, so I'll go with the Yankees. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm, of course, the Mariners since I had them. Mariners first time in 21 years they've been in the playoffs, so I'm a little excited. Sorry. Um, okay, second question. How are you feeling? Great. Phenomenal. Excited. Awesome. So you got a fight uh, coming up in November uh, 25th. Home, home, home court advantage, maybe, against Marlon Moraes. Uh, and, and this fight is at Featherweight, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. So let's let's backtrack a little bit here. You had a great a great uh, run in the UFC. You decided to to move along to PFL test free agency, if you will. Um, how did that go about as far as being uh, be, being signed by the PFL? So it wasn't my first time testing free agency. It's actually my second time. OK, um, I did after I think it was after that Amir Khani fight. I did it. And um, I got an offer from the PFL, which was a, a good offer at the time still, but it was um, it wasn't too far off from the UFC's offer. But I really loved being in the UFC, so I was like, you know what, I, I'm gonna stick with the UFC. I'm gonna stay in here. I really want to just continue to, to, to fight for the UFC. I want to try to get that title. I want I want to be here. This time around, I plan to do the same exact thing. I plan to resign with the UFC, and then PFL came strong with this offer. And um, the first offer was strong. Then the, the second offer was strong, but the last offer they gave me, I was like, dude, I can't I can't turn this one down. This is one of those that like. My, my my family's f uh, future, their financial security, like for life. So I was like, I, I got to take this deal. Now I understand that the first PFL offer when you were first a free agent was a very lucrative deal. Um, it paid more than the UFC at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what came what went into your uh, thought process at that point, the first time, as to like turning it down? Honestly, like my manager said, you can either be a UFC fighter or you can be a prize fighter. And at that time, I, I, I took a lot of pride in being a UFC fighter. Now I have two kids, I have a family, and I'm like, you know what? I'm a prize fighter, man. I'm, I'm 31 years old. I'm not saying I'm old at all, but I'm not, I'm not trying to do this until I'm in my fucking late 40s or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I get as much as I can to maximize, maximize my, my monetization while I can. Now, so how does that come about? Do you, do you talk to your family, your inner circle, do you, or is it more of a business decision where you talk to your manager uh, and, and make, that, make it from there? Well, both, both uh, family, friends, manager, team. I, it was, it was everything, and and everyone, all all signs pointed to to, to taking this deal. It, it's just one of those deals. It just, I couldn't pass it up, man. I, I really couldn't. Now let's talk about the second time. So did a PFL uh, reach out to you, or did your manager reach out to them, uh, saying, "Hey, he's he's available." I'm not. Sure. I mean, not no. Nobody reached out to me specifically. I just know that my manager reached out to me saying that PFL is interested, and then we went from there. Excellent. And then how did that discussion go as far as um, I, I'm sure that you uh, wanted to discuss with them first the terms and everything like that before uh, before signing along? How did that work? Did you talk with um, uh, uh, PFL management directly or did your manager do that? I let my manager do all that. I mean, I, I, he, he's the best in the business, Malky Kyle. He handled all handled all of that. So um, it's one of those deals like he's done a lot of big things in the UFC, like the first ever trade in, in, in the sport of MMA. He's done a lot mm -hmm. of big things. First ever trade, like trading uh, Mighty Mouse for for um, Ben Askren at the time. He's done the first ever Nike deal, getting Nike in the ring with John Jones. He's done some crazy deals. So I fully put all my trust in him, let him, let him handle that. And then the final offer he came back to me with was like his jaw dropping. I was like, all right, done deal, bro. Done awesome. deal. So do you tell him uh, or make it known uh, what you want out of the deal? Obviously money. But um, do you, uh, you know, I understand you also uh, have the opportunity to uh, call fights. Um, yeah. Is that something that you uh, had uh, expressed to uh, Malky or was it more along the lines of that was thrown in? No, that, it should have got to be cool if it was thrown in after that. But I don't think that they, they knew I was interested in that. But I, I said that. I was like, this is something I really want to do because I, I, I love this sport. I eat, sleep and breathe this sport. So I, was, I know once I'm done with this sport competing in it, I won't ever be fully done with it. Like I plan on commentating, coaching. I, I want to be involved in the sport for the rest of my life. Okay. So I, uh, that I said does that if we can get me a commentating gig, with with them because I know they're doing their challenger series, which is kind of like um similar to like the Dana White contender series, a little a little a little bit different, but very similar. So 
for me to be able to commentate on guys, up and coming guys, like no brainer for me. Awesome. So do you have any uh, broadcasting experience? Do you like, is there somebody that you know that uh, like that you watch on TV that you really, really like that's a commentator? Uh, John Anik, Paul Felder, those are probably my, two of my favorites. Obviously Joe, Joe Rogan, that's the obvious answer. Uh, I love him too, but uh, I, I really like John Anik and, and, and uh, Paul Felder a lot, especially Paul Felder being a fighter and just seeing how um, seamless his transition was from being a fighter to, to being a commentator. He's phenomenal at it. So that's somebody I really look up to when it, when it comes to that regard. Now, have you done any commentating any at, so far? I did. My 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 my. Actually, I have two brothers. My my middle brother. He fought a couple years ago, and I told the the, the promotion. I said I would love to commentate for the show, and they said, "Yeah, they, they paid me. Not nothing crazy. They paid me, and, and I was able to commentate the show. When my brother fought, I actually went and cornered him. Then it came right back to commentating. So that was cool. I did that maybe like three years ago. Yeah. So how did you like do you like the whole process of commentating though? For real? Uh, do, I mean, I mean, is, is it how, is it different? Do you find yourself uh, talking through too, too technical or do you, do you find yourself just watching and not talking? What do they tell you to do? They, they didn't tell me to do anything. They said, just be you, which is like, oh, this is even better. But like <laughs> when I'm watching fights anyway, like usually have a big group of friends. I have a huge family, huge, huge group of friends. So like for all the fight nights, we usually have everybody together at one spot, somebody's house. And uh, it's, I just basically transitioned from what I was doing with my friends to what I was doing there. So it's, I feel like it's a, it'll be a seamless transition where I'm just, I'm talking out loud. I'm talk, saying my thoughts out loud about what's going on, breaking it down and stuff like that. Cause a lot of times my friends, like they've never been in fights or anything like that. So they don't, they don't really know exactly what's going on. They don't know how exhausting like some positions can be. They don't know um wh wh where the danger really is. So I mean, it's, I'm explaining it to them and then I'm just going to go do the same thing with a mic in my face. That's awesome. That's awesome. So do you plan to reach out to like a Felder or Anik or a anyone else as far as like any tips or, you know, you know, how do I deal with people talking in my ear while I'm talking to you that kind of stuff? I, I didn't plan on it because I haven't put too much thought into it because I have the, the fight first and foremost that I have to, to worry about. Once I get my first date booked for, for, for commentating, then that's when I'll probably do something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So now let's talk about the fight. Marlon Marais, November 25th uh, in New York City. How did you, when did you first learn that it was going to be Marais? Uh, so two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, something like that. And instant, like, uh, okay, that that's one of those fights that's like, this is the biggest name I can get right now in the PFL. Like name value wise, he's, he's probably got the, one of the bigger names. He's got a huge following. Um, everybody knows who he is, especially the, the diehard fans. I, I definitely know who he is. Even the ones that are casuals, they know who he is. So I was like, for my first fight going into the PFL, you can't get a bigger name. You can't get a more exciting matchup than this one. It gets my blood pumping. It gets my, you get the jitters and stuff like that when you, when you get a name like Marlon because he is, he's super dangerous. Even though he's on a losing streak, the dude is, he's super dangerous. Yeah, no, Marais, you know, he, like you said, alluded to, he's, he is on a, a losing streak, but he has defeated o Jose Aldo. He's fought all the, all the big bantam weights and featherweights in the UFC. Is there a, how do you feel your, your styles match up with uh, his style? I think stylistically, it's a great matchup for me. Um, you guys see, like, as the fight goes on, I, I get, tend to get better. So uh, I think that as the minutes go on, as the time starts ticking down, as the lactic acid starts to build, I think I'm sure we're going to get better and progress. Um, and I think that's when that's where he'll start to fade, and I'll be able to pick it up even more. Excellent, excellent. Now, we're uh, like a month and a half out from, from the fight happening. So what, what, what part of your training camp are you in? Are you just starting to, to get into it? Are you, or have you always been, have you been just keeping yourself in shape this whole, whole time? I've been, I've been, I've known that I'm going to have that date for a while now. So it's been basically a fucking, it's going to be like a three and a half, four month training camp, basically. Not, not going too crazy with the hard sparring and stuff like that before it's, like it's, we're just getting into it last week was like my first official week of, of training camp. So now we're getting into the harder sparring and stuff like that. But before that, it was hard cardio, hard conditioning, hard mm -hmm. grappling, hard rest. So I've been in shape for a while now. And it's, and it's just the same, is your, your same training spot at Tiger Shulman? Yep. Same, same guys, just mixing it up a little bit, doing some, uh, getting some pro boxers and stuff like that. Oh, excellent. Excellent. That, that sounds great. Um, so this is this is in New York City. So is I I assume you're gonna have a lot of a, bit, a lot of fans coming in that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, man. I'm already seven and zero in New York, so I feel like I can't lose in New York. And then on top of that, like all my friends and family, no matter where the fight is, they're gonna be there. But the fact that they're all off of work because it's Black Friday, and then it's right in New York, only an hour and like ten minutes away from from where we all live. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking the place is gonna be packed out. They're probably gonna have to open up more seating because I got a lot of people coming. That, that 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 that's awesome. Do you, now, do you feel a little bit of uh, 
of, uh, of, uh, of uh, responsibility that you have to show out in front of your fans or are you just like the crowd's going to pump you up even more? Give me, give me all the pressure. I, I, I love the pressure. Like the, the, the more pressure, the, the better. I feel like I thrive under the pressure. The, the, the brighter the lights, the, the more you doubt me. That, that's, I, I love that. I, re, I really do. So I, I relish in that in those moments. So um, yeah, I got a lot of people coming. I don't want, I don't want to lose. If we're in a fucking backyard, you think I want to lose in my hometown? Fuck no, I don't want to lose. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Ooh, that's awesome. So uh, let's talk about next season now. So you know, this is this is kind of like the primer for uh for you know uh pfl for 2023 have you guys decided yet as far as where you're going to be i know you 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 have been talking a little bit about uh, uh dipping your toes into the lightweight division or maybe staying at featherweight well i mean it, it's two great options obviously the lightweight division and the, and the featherweight division they have the, are their their two most stacked divisions i think um, got great fights, great fighters in both. A lot of good matchups uh, t- to be had in both weight classes. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, take this fight. I'm going to see how my body reacts to putting the weight back on after the fight, and then I'm going to reassess and go from there. Because you guys know, like for the, for the, the tournament system, you're fighting every six weeks or something like that. So mm-hmm. for me to basically once I'm done fighting, I, I, my weight obviously is going to go up. I need to be able to make maintain a, a certain weight where I'm not fucking blowing up and then have to cut weight within a couple weeks. So I'm going to take it one fight at a time. I'm going to take this fight as my feeler to see whether I'm going to go to 45 or 55 for the, for the tournament next year. I see. And so do you, do you find yourself fluctuate? I mean, your, your weight going way up after, after a fight or after, I mean, after you cut weight and then you, you, you uh, uh, rehydrate and everything like that, is it, does it go up too high or is it something like when, if you're at 155, it's, it's a much easier cut. You feel much better oh, walking around that kind of stuff. I, I haven't, I've yet to fight at 155, but I can only imagine how, how much you <laughs> yeah. but um it's just one of those things like after a fight like i'm not a natural 145 pound guy so after the fight not after the wake after the wake cut i don't get to a crazy i'm not eating a bunch of junk i'm eating healthy foods and shit like that to get ready for the fight after the fight is when you let loose a little bit and that that first week or two is when you're, you're eating all the stuff that you, like all the forbidden fruits that you weren't allowed to eat for the last couple of weeks so that's when the weight goes up a little bit so i gotta be able to maintain and not go too crazy with that awesome. so i'm gonna Try it, see how I feel after after this fight, and then we'll decide 45 or 55 for the season. Is there a time? No, it do, do the does the roster of uh, athletes coming out for 2023 will that make any impact, or do you have to declare before um, uh, before uh, you know they they uh, unveil the list, the list of fighters that are coming out? No, the, the, it's a, I'm only thinking about me. I'm not thinking about anybody else. I'm just thinking strictly about me and what how I'm going to perform best, what weight class I'll perform best at. Gotcha. And then, so, you know, uh, obviously we, we've seen fighters uh, come to the PFL and um, have uh, a smattering of success. Um, obviously, we uh, the biggest th- guys that we, we, we've seen that come had come to the PFL and not done so well was, of course, is Anthony Pettis, Rory McDonald had had both of them had injuries and both of them had disappointing uh, 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 debuts. Uh, how are you going to avoid uh, something like that? Uh, coming into your fight against Marlon Moraes? It doesn't matter where the fight is. What, like, at the end of the day, it's a fight. And I, and, and I like I said, I, I I am a sore loser. I don't fucking like losing. I want to I want to win everything I'm in. So I'm going to do whatever I can to maximize my chances of winning. I'm not taking if any injuries. I do PT when I'm not injured. You know I mean, I, I have a really good physical therapist that I go see once a week, even when I don't have injuries. So that kind of shit I'm taking super seriously. I'm not cutting any corners, not uh, leaving any stone unturned. I'll be primed, ready to go November 25th. Well, Shane, thank you so much for your time. Uh, like you said, it's in November 25th, Black Friday. Uh, go shop and then go watch the fights on pay per view. On pay per view, I, mean, I forgot that's a that's a big thing. Uh, first time the PFL has been on pay per view. Uh, it, it's going to be awesome to watch. Shane, thank you for your time. Uh, we wish you a good training camp uh, and thank health uh, leading up to November 25th. I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy All the right, show. thank you, Shane. Have a good one. You too.